Hello everybody. This presentation is part of lecture series in food emulsions and foams. In this presentation we are going to look deeper into an emulsion and try to understand the characteristics of colloidal particles and their interactions and forces involved in the interaction and the impact of the interaction on physicochemical and organoleptic properties of emulsion. Okay, before we start, let's review what we have learned from the previous lecture. Kathy, can you summarize important points from the previous lecture? Yes, sure. We have learned that emulsion can become unstable, or separate into two layers. This involves several mechanisms such as creaming and sedimentation, flocculation, coalescence, phase inversion, and Ostwald ripening. Okay, excellent. So, why is it important to understand about colloidal interactions? Oh, I think in an emulsion, the droplets are always trying to come close together due to some intermolecular forces and this could lead to aggregation, such as flocculation. So, if we understand the nature of interaction between droplets and the emulsion, we can figure out ways to make a stable emulsion. That's good, Kathy. Now, let me go into details. Colloidal interactions govern whether emulsion droplets aggregate or remain as separate entities. The effects of the intermolecular forces on the stability of dispersed systems can be described in terms of the forces and the energy potential between the colloidal particles. Now, let's focus our attention on two droplets in the emulsion as shown in the picture. The interactions between these two droplets can be described in terms of an interdroplet pair potential. Let's denote this as WH. This is the energy required to bring two emulsion droplets from an infinite distance apart, to a closer distance with a separation of H, as shown in the diagram. OK, consider a system shown in this picture which consists of two emulsion droplets of radius R, separated from each other at a distance H. For simplicity, let's assume that only two types of interactions occur between the droplets one attractive and one repulsive. So, we write the interdroplet pair potential, WH, as an at sum of these two interactions. Excuse me, Professor. Can I ask a question? Yes, go ahead, Shima. You were saying that the interdroplet pair potential, WH, as an at sum of the interactive and repulsive interactions. Does that mean the overall interactions between the droplets depends on the relative magnitude and range of the attractive and repulsive interactions? Yes, exactly Shima. Good question. It shows that you are listening and thinking. From the previous explanation, basically in any emulsion or dispersed system, there are two main interacting forces in affecting the degree of interaction between droplets. 1. Van der Waals attractive forces and 2. Electrostatic repulsive forces. Attractive forces tend to destabilize colloids whereas repulsive forces generally impart stability. Of course, this is a very simplified way to understand the nature and complexity of interaction in the dispersed system even for simple food emulsion. Van der Waals interactive forces originates from the dipole-dipole interactions. The force between two droplets arising from van der Waals interactions is always attractive for like droplets. The attractive force increases more and more rapidly as the droplets approach, and the strength of the attractive force can be calculated using this equation. Now, another important interactive force between droplets in the emulsion is the electrostatic force. The electrostatic interaction between similarly charged droplets is repulsive and so electrostatic interaction play a major role in preventing droplets from coming close enough together to aggregate. In order to understand about the role and effect of electrostatic force, first we have to understand a few concepts, such as surface charge, electrical double layer, zeta potential, and DLVO theory. Electrostatic force actually arises from the presence of charge on the surface of colloidal particle or droplet. Excuse me professor. Where is the surface charge comes from? I mean, the origin. Oh, well, there are two main sources of surface charge, ionization of acidic and basic groups, and adsorption from solution of small ions. In protein-stabilized emulsions, 
the predominant ionizing groups at the surface are carboxylic acids, yielding CO2- and amines, yielding NH3+. In addition, some surface active polysaccharides, such as modified starch and gum arabic, also have acidic groups which may be ionized. Anionic emulsifiers would of course carry negative charge. The sign and magnitude of the average surface charge density is dependent on the pH and ionic strength of the surrounding aqueous environment. An understanding of the origin and nature of electrostatic interactions between emulsion droplets relies on an understanding of the way that the various types of ions are organized close to charge surface of the droplet. If we place a particle into an aqueous medium, it will acquire a counter ion around its surface. In this example, we might have a negatively charged particle and that will attract a positive ion immediately around its surface to counterbalance the charge, and that in turn will attract other ions, and we get a buildup of an ion cloud. Thus an electrical double layer exists around each particle. The liquid layers surrounding the particle exists as two parts, one, an inner region, called stern layer, where the ions are strongly bound, and, two, an outer, or diffuse region, where the ions are less firmly associated. Within this diffuse layer is an imaginary boundary, within which the particle acts as a single entity. The potential at this boundary is called zeta potential. If the particles start to move for whatever reasons, say, due to diffusion, then the ions close to the surface of the particle will move together with the particle as a single entity, whereas ions which are farther from the particle surface remain where they are. This is called a hydrodynamic plane of shear, or simply a slipping plane, and this slipping plane has an electrical potential associated with it, known as zeta potential. The distribution of ions close to a charged surface is referred to as the electrical double layer, because it is convenient to assume that the system consists of two oppositely charged layers, the surface, and the surrounding liquid. The double layer may be regarded as consisting of two regions, an inner region of strongly adsorbed ions and an outer region where ions are diffusely distributed according to a balance between electrical forces and random thermal motion. So. When an emulsion is stabilized through electrostatic forces, the formation of a double layer is very important for the stability of the emulsion. However, we should take note that the double layer is sensitive to electrolytes concentration and also temperature. This means that the stability of the emulsion may be manipulated by adding electrolytes or changing the temperature. Now, let me introduce the DLVO theory in relation to the role of electrostatic forces in emulsion stability. The theory was named after four scientists, Dirjagin, Landor, Verwey, and Overbeek. In this theory, the magnitude of the stabilizing energy barrier was calculated from the sum of the electrostatic double layer repulsion, and the van der Waals attraction. DLVO theory suggests that electrical double layer repulsion will stabilize emulsion when the electrolyte concentration phase is less than a certain value. DLVO theory relates the stability of emulsified droplets to two independent potentials that come into action when two droplets approach each other. As a consequence, these additive forces may be expressed as a potential energy versus separation curve. A positive resultant corresponds to an energy barrier and repulsion while a negative resultant corresponds to attraction and hence aggregation. Let's look at more detail on zeta potential. In the previous slide, we have seen that hydrodynamic plane of shear, also called slipping plane, has an electrical potential associated with it, known as zeta potential. Therefore, zeta potential is defined as the electrical potential at the slipping plane. Droplets interact according to the magnitude of the zeta potential, not their surface charge, but zeta potential tells us the effectiveness of the surface charge. For electrostatically stabilized dispersions, the higher the value of zeta potential, the more stable the dispersion is likely to be. The determination of zeta potential is extremely important in the study of emulsion stability. 
It is an important parameter for both achieving emulsion stability and destroying emulsion stability. A zeta potential versus pH curve will be positive at low pH, and lower or negative at high pH. There may be a point where the plot passes through zero zeta potential. This point is called the isoelectric point, PI, and is very important from the practical consideration. Isoelectric point is the point where the colloidal system is least stable. We can see from the graph, if we were working in the pH region of 4.0 to 7.5, we would expect some serious flocculation to occur, particularly if we lower the pH to 5.5, which is the pi of the system. If we work at the extreme of pH, however, then we can see that zeta potential at pH less than 4.0 should be sufficiently positive so that the droplets remain stable. Similarly if we adjust the pH to pH greater than 7.5, the droplets are sufficiently negative and remain stable. This type of plot provides information as to the range of pH we can operate for a particular emulsion. The general dividing line between stable and unstable suspensions is generally taken at either 30 or minus 30 MV. Emulsion with zeta potentials more positive than 30 MV, or more negative than minus 30 MV, are normally considered stable. Small changes in the pH or concentration of ions, ionic strength, can lead to dramatic changes in the zeta potential.